In this lecture, we will talk about buffer manager. To understand the role of a buffer manager, for, let us say a small example. Uh, consider a database which uh, can hold the disk. The disk can hold 10 lakh pages. And suppose the main memory consists of, I mean, is enough to hold only uh, 2,000 pages, say. Then, if there is a query which wants to read a file, and that file may consist of uh, spread across 2,000 pages, then uh, the entire file has to be brought into the main memory. Suppose if there is another query which is which has to read 4,000 pages, then the main memory is not enough. So there should be a procedure which will bring the pages onto the main memory, the buffer, and then process them, send them back, again bring another set of pages until the process of reading all the or modifying all the 4,000 pages is over. So this is how the process has to go on. Now, there should be some mechanism to deal with this. That is exactly the buffer manager do. Uh, we can we can see the buffer manager as a software layer which is responsible for bringing the pages that are required for a given query onto the main memory, process them once they are processed and send them back. And there should be a mechanism to do this on a continuous basis. The buffer manager partitions the available memory into smaller units, which are called pages or frames. And uh, the collection of such frames is called a buffer pool. Whenever there is a request for data block, and if the data block is available in one of the frames in the buffer pool, then the buffer manager returns the address of that uh, frame to the requester. Whereas if, if the data is not available in the buffer pool, then it has to allocate one of the frames uh, for the transfer of data into the frame. To do this kind of processing, it maintains a bookkeeping style of uh, functioning and it maintains two parameters or two variables for that matter. One is a pin count and another is dirty. They are the parameters maintained for each frame. Pin count actually refers to the number of times the page has been uh, requested and currently used in a given frame and uh, which has not been uh, transferred or released back. Whereas dirty is a boolean variable which indicates uh, is always by default it is set as zero. If a page has been brought only for read purpose, so dirty is zero, dirty value zero. Whereas if a particular transaction has written something on, the, on a page and if it is not yet transferred onto the disk, the dirty boolean variable is taken as one. So it's an indication that the page has been modified and it has to be uh, transferred back to the uh, stable storage or a uh, disk. When a request is made to the buffer manager for a particular page, then uh, the buffer manager first checks whether that page is already available in one of the frames by a request by someone else. If that uh, page is available, then uh, it checks the frame and uh, it, it, it increments the page count or a pin count of that frame. And um, if it is not there, if, if no frame is containing a requested page, then it has to identify a suitable frame into which this page has to be brought in. Again, there are uh, several uh, methods to do this. That is called uh, replacement policies, frame replacement policies. By following uh, any one of the frame replacement policies, it identifies a suitable frame and it uh, tries to bring that page onto that frame. By chance, if that frame has already a page, and whose dirty value is 1, that's an indication that the page has already there, has already been there and uh, it is in the dirty stage. That means it has to be written back to the disk. So first it has, it will be written back to the disk and then the requested page will be brought into that frame. So this kind of uh, mechanism will be followed and uh, once that frame is uh, uh, given this page, the memory address of the frame will be given to the requester. That's how the process will be complete whenever there is a request for a page. Most of the systems use this uh, least recent, recently used uh, strategy or LRU strategy in which the past usage of the uh, frames is acts as a future reference. Uh, in practice, what happens is a queue of pointers of frames is maintained. Whenever a frame is freed by the buffer manager, then the, the address of that frame is added to the end of the queue so that whenever there is a request, the head of the queue is uh, allocated for the usage so that um, this LRU policy is being maintained. 
and uh, similar policy is another policy is uh, clock replacement policy uh, where the frames are identified uh, are, uh, are virtually ar uh, arranged in the form of a um, dots in the, in the clock so that a pointer pointing to the frames rotates onto the frames whenever it finds a suitable frame it allocates if it doesn't find a frame suitable frame it moves forward and so that it happens in a clockwise format so that whenever it identifies a suitable frame that is given for the allocation of the page that is how it is being done in a, a clock replacement policy it is similar to uh, LRU but with less overheads but both of these uh, suffer uh, certain drawbacks that whenever there is a sequential scan of files then uh, unnecessarily wastage of time is being done wastage of time is being identified uh, in case of uh, scanning of a sequential files and repeatedly and uh, that's one of the negative points of these policies and uh, the, apart, from, apart from these two the other policies are first in first out uh, policy uh, and uh, which are random randomly selecting the frames whether it is free then it's allocated by the frames. Apart from this um, MRU most recently used strategy is also one of the strategies which is just opposite of the LRU again which is similar to that but with, with the overheads and uh, not, not only that buffer manager can also use the statistical information on the usage patterns of the uh, frames and the pages so that it, it, it can have a new new mechanisms or new policy, it can devise new policies from that. That is another, another uh, feature that we can incorporate. And uh, actually buffer manager has uh, one more role. If you remember uh, uh, in case of recovery, it also forces some of the pages under the, under the outputs of the blocks into the stable storage. Buffer manager also do these actions on the frames. And these are all the actions of the manager uh, that we can uh, observe.